So my friend asked me uh, my process for making coffee. And uh, so I use the V60 pour over method and uh, some beans from Black Rifle. So I'm just gonna kind of talk through what I do to do that. Interesting. So first and foremost, I get my beans from this company called Black Rifle. They are a veteran owned and operated company. Uh, really cool brand, lots of cool stuff that they do. So yes, that's the very first thing I do. Uh, I use this Capresso uh, burr grinder. It's important to use the, the burr grinder instead of a normal blade because the blade uh, chops the beans up in a weird way. And this allows you to adjust like the fineness. For a pour over, you usually do like a medium fine, which is why it's set where it is set right there. Uh, I have this kettle here. Uh, it doesn't particularly matter what brand you get as long as you can kind of set your own temperature. I tend to go around two or three um, two or four ish on my temperature and I have this cool uh, airtight container that I keep my coffee in and I have a subscription to Black Rifle so I get it uh, I get two bags once every three weeks or so so I have a little scale this is cheap El Cheapo scale no big deal I tend to usually weigh out anywhere from 23 to 25 grams of coffee as I'm doing it so we'll go ahead and do that and a little bit more Okay, all right, 25, perfect. So then put this in here. And let this guy go down. I have the, um, the glass V60. So I have the glass one. Um, there's plastic, glass, doesn't really matter. I think probably the most important thing here is uh, you gotta, uh, once I, I like to fold this so it kind of fits in here nice, but the most important thing is to rinse out this filter. Um, it doesn't have like a lot of flavor in the filter, but it like does have a little. So I like to rinse this off to get that flavor out of there. And the other thing is um, that's also important here is the heat from the water going down into the cup gets the uh, inside of the cup warm. So a lot of times I tend to kind of stir this around to get the inside of that cup warm. So that way when the coffee gets in there, it's not um, hitting a cold steel cup. So then you go here, let's go straight into the cone. All right, and we'll zero this out. I usually try to shake this up to get this as flat as possible so that way all the water um, penetrates it at an even level. And so what you try to tend to do is go to about 50 grams of water to start. So I kind of just swirl this around until it gets to right around 50. You can kind of see what's happening here is all these bubbles that are forming. What we're doing is we're actually releasing carbon dioxide out of the coffee. That's what kind of makes coffee bitter. So this first pass at it is is um, washing the beans out of that carbon dioxide, and that's what those bubbles are forming. So we'll kind of give this, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds to kind of bubble and get all that carbon dioxide out. Okay. Let's stop stripping for a few seconds, then I'll tend to go. So this is what uh, they refer to as the bloom now. So here we go. What's going to happen is I'm going to start pouring real slow and kind of go around in these circles. And all the while you can see the scale going up. So that's basically it. Just nice and slowly for, they say this whole process should take about a minute and a half, give or take. It doesn't really make a difference to me in terms of time-wise, but that's the prevailing theory on time. Um, some people say not to go on the sides. I've read a lot of stuff about it. I kind of find it helps run the coffee off of the sides that get stuck to the paper, so I kind of go there a little bit. I don't think it makes a big difference. There's nothing magical here. It's just something about the process. I love waking up every morning and doing this. So I tend to go with 25 grams of coffee to about 
350 grams of water. It's like 1 16th ratio or something. None of this is precise though. I mean, 355, I just think that. But that's basically it. Um, this will drain and then I can dump out my cone and be on my way. So it's, it's a relatively easy process. It's the most consistent flavor I've gotten. I do like the AeroPress too, and I might do another video on what I do with the AeroPress. Um, but yeah, this is, this is just the simple process for the V60. So I'll just give this just a, another few seconds to drain here. Okay, it is now drained. So yeah, I'll just kind of take this over here. Okay, we'll go open the pantry. Dump that guy. So clean up on this is nice and easy. I find it to be a little easier than something like the French press because basically you're just dumping it out, rinsing it with water and you're, you're done. So it's nice and easy process. Not bad.